time. We appreciate um, you guys coming out this evening. So as a part of the parent mentor program and the special ed department, we're trying to do as well we did pre-COVID, not so much during the last year or so, some educational evening meetings. Um, so this is the second one we're having this year, and we've been um, glad to have the opportunity to have the Cowie join us uh, this evening. So we've got Maggie Gons, who is here representing the Center uh, for the Young Child, correct? And then Alex Corwin, on the other end, is here for the Lifespan Transition Center. So for our students as they're getting older, ready to transition out of school age into adult, uh, post school, but also as parents of younger children, you know, getting prepared and planning for those middle school, high school years. Um, Gwen Tarshaw, did I say it right? Where's Gwen? She's here as well. She's just um, here to observe. She's the director director of family and community outreach at Ocali. So as they navigate through their website and the resources that they have available for families in the community, if you have questions. Um, you, know, you can obviously ask them during, and then they'll be here at the end of that time as well. Um, with me here tonight from Worthington is Colleen Sintron Belly. She is our parent mentor, and two of our coordinators, Beth Raina Williams and uh, Renee Brinson, is here. Renee, Renee did not bring her puppy. I have to be clearly that's my puppy. I just got her, and I'm just at the point where I can't leave her in the cage that long. So I'm like, I'm just going to drag her back to the yeah. tonight. So that's Chloe. She's our guest of honor. But anyway, welcome. Thank you, guys. And we'll let you get started. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we were, uh, quickly, we'll just give like some brief introductions about ourselves, other than being kind of the, the center director for the Lifespan Transition Center. Uh, I previously worked here in Franklin County at the Franklin County Board of Developmental Disabilities, if any of you are connected with with them as well, I see some hand raised and some, some nods. Uh, I also worked at the Ohio Department of Education, working in secondary transition for children 14 and up, um, and then now here at the Lifespan Transition Center at O'Kelly for the last couple of years. So, excited to be here. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I did not ask you, but we are recording this event tonight because we have a lot of families who can't be here. So if you guys could stay close to the mic when oh, you're yeah. speaking, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry, I should have done that before. Close to have to stand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just real, real briefly for the recording as well, I, I worked here at Franklin County at the Franklin County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Um, many of you might already be connected with them and have an SSA, a Service and Support Administrator, kind of helping you navigate some of the resources that are available here in Franklin County. Uh, as well as after that, I worked at the Ohio Department of Education in the Office for Exceptional Children, working in secondary transition and partnerships. Um, and now here at Ocali for the last couple of years in the Lifespan Transition Center. So I'm really happy to be here. Uh, my expertise is kind of age 14 and up, which is when formal transition planning happens here in the state of Ohio. Um, and I'm going to share some resources about that. But first, I'll have Maggie introduce herself. Alex. So uh, my name is Maggie Gons, um, and uh, previous to working for Ocali, I worked in early intervention. Um, here in Ohio, both in Franklin County and then also in some southeastern Ohio counties doing a telepilot project pre-COVID. Um, and also uh, have done intervention in preschool and worked in private practice as a speech language pathologist for many, many years. Um, Continue to do a little bit of private practice uh, in that role um, prior to coming to Ocali. And I work in the Center for the Young Child. Um, and similar to Alex, the Center for the Young Child kind of looks at children um, birth or prenatally all the way through age eight uh, that may have some developmental delay or a definite um, or a diagnosis of any um, medical condition that would mean that they may reach out to Ocali. So we work closely with ODE, Ohio Department of Education, Department of Developmental Disabilities, we work closely with the child care um, through Ohio Department of Job and Family Services and Ohio Department of Health. So a lot of different entities there. So I'm uh, just curious today um, how old your students here um, would be just so we can kind of tailor what we're going to share with you guys today. Um, kind of show of hands, like how many are age eight or younger in that kind of early elementary school, early intervention potentially? Okay, great. 
And then uh, who's kind of in that middle school age, eight, like eight to 14, not maybe not quite in high school yet. All right. And then do we have any kind of age 14 and up? <laughs> You're the winner. You had all three years. Nice <laughs> graduating. Graduating, perfect. Perfect timing. Okay, well, that's good. It's good. We have a good range, which is really nice. We can um, kind of navigate through some of our centers. Uh, we have many other centers that aren't here today, as well as some different resources. We have some handouts. Uh, so I think we can kind of get started just kind of walking through our website. If you haven't been before, ocali.org is our, our main landing page. And then if you click menu, you'll get all the different centers here. We've got our autism center. Um, we have our Teaching Diverse Learners and Universal Design for Learning Center. Those are geared more towards our professionals that are serving students with disabilities. We have our Assistive Technology and Accessible Educational Materials Center, which is focuses on technology for students um, and, and being able to be as independent as possible. Uh, we have our Lifespan Transition Center, which we'll get much deeper into. Uh, our Family and Community Outreach Center, which Gwen is our director of. Uh, the Center for the Young Child. Our Outreach Center for Deafness and Blindness, which has um, a lot of great resources. If you do have anyone, uh, if you're, you're a young student or child, is um, hard of hearing or deaf or blind, there's a lot of really great resources there. And then our newest center, which um, is maybe three or four months old, which is our Multi-System Navigation Center. Um, this is still in the process of being developed, but this is for our youth with really complex needs that are engaged maybe with mental health, Juvenile Justice, County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Special Education. They might have a really robust and comprehensive team um, and they're working through maybe a lot of challenges both at home and in the classroom. Um, so those, those resources are kind of in development now. There's regional coaches across the state that are gonna be helping families navigate all the multi-systems that they're engaged with. Uh, but that's a, that's a very new center for us here at Ocali and it will um, have a lot of resources and tools for you guys in the future. I don't know if you want to sure. talk about some online. So, um, in addition to all the centers, which have a variety of resources there, both for professionals and families, um, we also have a lot of online learning. Um, and I would say 99% of Ocali resources and online learning um, resources are free, um, to especially to those in Ohio. Um, so. One of the online uh, resources is the Autism Certification Center, um, which I have pulled up on this tab here. It's just autismcertificationcenter.org. Um, and this is a series of online um, modules that you can take at, at your leisure. Um, the first one is called The Many Faces of Autism, and it's about a 90-minute overview about autism. Um, it's great for anyone who just wants to understand better and know what that means, understand and see a variety of people with that diagnosis. And then once that module is completed, there is um, a variety of other courses available to you. It's over 10 and a half hours of videos of real families in communities, in schools, um, and children um, trying different strategies. So uh, there is a toddler preschool age series, there is a school age series, and then there is a transition age series as well. Um, and so if you are a professional, there are professional credits attached to it. If you're a family, it's real life. Um, it shows videos. Um, a variety of professionals across the nation consulted and were a part of that. And it's free um, at any point and on your own time um, as well, if you want to just learn some practical strategies. Um, additionally, we have um, some other online resources called the Autism Internet Modules. And these are a little bit more text heavy, so there's a lot more reading and less video, but they have a variety of specific topics, specific um, information about interventions. Um, they're always adding to that. Um, and additionally, we have assistive technology internet modules, and those are specific about assistive technology products, um, resources, interventional techniques. If you have a child that is using any assistive technology um, in that way, and you wanna learn more about it, um, those are nice resources. Um, additionally, um, another resource that I just think would be nice to highlight for you guys is if you come down to this tab, it says Lending Library. Click on that. Um, we have a Lending Library here at Ocali, um, and it is open to any Ohio resident. 
And in that lending library, there are actual books, DVDs, um, and also materials, um, assistive technology materials specifically. So, okay, I'm figure out how to use the computer that's not mine. Um, so, this is just some of the featured model or items, but um, say there was a resource that someone recommended or a book that you wanted to check out or a video on a topic um, and you wanted to try it out for a period of time, what happens is you create an account in the lending library. Ocali finds that item in the library. If it's available, they will ship it to you um, and you get to borrow it for 21 days. And then UPS will come back out and pick it up from your porch from you. Um, so uh, you guys are actually close to the library here if it were a physical library you go to, but um, it comes to you at your house through the UPS system um, and gets picked back up. So you don't actually have to worry about taking it back if they just have it scheduled for you. Um, and one of the cool things, or I think is one of the coolest things, um, is that there's a library of assistive technology devices. So um, maybe you have a child um, who is using an iPad for a specific app, or you want to try an app that's been recommended um, for an intervention or a technique, you can actually request to borrow an iPad with apps loaded on it um, already. So you could try those out, test them, um, see if it's a good fit before you buy it. Um, because some of those apps, you know, are a couple hundred dollars or they're, they're not just the $2 one, they're more expensive. So um, that's a really cool feature. Um, additionally, if you have a child who has a hearing loss um, and needs some FM system support, that you are able during the school year to borrow an FM system um, and help boost that hearing signal that's going to them in the classroom. Uh, additionally, there are some adaptive toys and um, one of the newest resources that they have are these, uh, I just learned about it today, the Autism Center has put together these things called grab and go kits. Um, and so uh, a little bit later, we'll go through some of the resources that might be interesting within centers, but the grab and go resource kits are kits that are specifically about an intervention that you can just grab, go and implement, um, it's ready to go for you. Um, there's sensory toys, there's a variety of Communication devices. So communication if devices. There, if there are recommendations for a communication device, again, you can try it out and test it before you use um, either private funds or maybe a health insurance policy that's only going to cover one device for you know X amount of years. So it is really nice to have the technology at your fingertips in order to um, just rent for 21 days. And I believe you can get that extended if there's no one else kind of waiting for it. You can kind of renew it like you would any other library book for material. Yep. Any questions so far? Is there anything you want to show? Because I can keep talking. <laughs> yeah, keep going, keep going. Okay. Um, so as I was talking about the grab and grow resources, um, one of the, that is through our autism center and these resources are really uh, nice for children, not just with that diagnosis, but really any child. Um, a lot of the materials can be used for kids regardless. Um, I use some of these strategies with my nieces and nephews that are preschool age. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down, and see if I can find it actually. So this Autism Center Grab and Go Resource Gallery of Interventions. So, um, you can see here um, that on the left hand side, um, there are a variety of interventions listed, um, like breathing cards. Um, and so, what they have here is they have examples, and then they have things you can just download that are already pre made that you could take and grab with or take with you um, to use. They've also provided a video of how to use that resource. Um, and then they provide some books if you wanted to dig into it a little bit more and read about it um, and understand maybe why this strategy can be helpful for a variety of children. Uh, there's some additional resources. So they've listed quite a few um, and they're constantly adding to it too. So if there isn't something yet, they might be in the midst of developing it. So this first then, um, They'll also direct you to any online modules that have developed um, 
specifically supporting the use of that tool and how to implement it. Um, but you can see there's a variety of uh, resources about how to use first then. So that's just one resource. Um, and I believe the grab and goes are like laminated packets that come if you wanted to to get those from the lending library. But if not, yeah, you can always just download any of these. Everything on our website, at, at, yeah, ninety nine point nine percent is free. So um, you're able to just kind of take it, print it at home if you need to, um, or request copies from the lending library. So um, we can certainly spend hours going through our <laughs> website. Um, but I guess to be most helpful, how many of you here are familiar with Ocali or have ventured onto the web resource before? So I see two hands. So a lot of you guys haven't heard of us. So um, as an organization, Ocali, uh, we don't provide any direct intervention for students, but we certainly are a resource for professionals and families that have children um, in their lives with disabilities or suspected disabilities. Um, so we provide a lot of learning resources um, and we work closely with all the state agencies to make sure they have the most up-to-date current information as well. Um, one of our uh, mission or vision um, items is that we link research to real life. So we bring research to practice. So um, trying to make sure things are staying up-to-date and we're doing the most current things that we can here in Ohio. Yeah, you'll see a lot of those grab and go uh, resources as well as other items are evidence based practices. So these are things that have been researched and tested and, and are evidence based strategies that are in early intervention and special ed classrooms and other places. Um, so we really try to highlight those and, like she said, bring resource to reality and, and allow folks to, um, in a very simple way, whether it's a how to video or breaking it down in multiple steps, really allow folks to implement these at home in the classroom. And, with family members. Yeah. So See. one, uh, a few other resources that um, might be interesting. So uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic first started, uh, we launched something called Here to Help. Um, and these were videos that um, were really designed to be really short, helpful videos that can be watched on your own time. Um, I think they started at four minutes at four and quickly became longer than four minutes. Um, but they are divided into a variety of interests. Um, there is a whole section that can sort them for things that would be interesting to families, um, things that would be interesting to an educator. Um, so these are just really short snippets um, that talk about a lot of different things. So um, there is one on special interests. So a special interest that a child may have that um, really can be a good motivator for that. Um, there is one on um, setting up Google Classrooms or um, using social narratives to support your child um, in, in whatever social situation that they may encounter or getting ready to encounter or embark on. Um, there is uh, one on accessibility features in Zoom. So um, how we can set Zoom up to be more accessible for children that maybe have a harder time paying attention, whether it's turning on the captioning or um, changing some of the visual contrast features. But there's a lot of them listed there, um, and they're all free. Just click on it, it'll launch, and you can watch it on your own time. Alex, I don't know, you've had a variety of resources, and I wanted I to be able to share those. I picked it show yeah, how Ocali got its name. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> Ocali is we're an acronym, we're an acronym <laughs> um, and it, we don't we break it down very often because we. Our original name was the Ohio Center for Autism and Low Incidence, um, and low incidence refers to low incidence disabilities. Um, but we certainly don't just focus on autism, so we don't use that, um, spell it out very often. Oh. Uh, so yeah, that's a great question, because it is kind of a strange word, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot of the um, different materials that you'll see that say kind of autism focused, they really can be used for, for anyone that has a disability. They're, they're not just autism specific. These strategies work with um, my young children as well, who are typically developing the first then boards and things like that can just be really helpful strategies to move throughout the day and handle emotions. But again, for a show, quick show of hands, how many folks are transition age, age 14 and up, getting ready to graduate? Oh man, this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. 
I'm sorry, I've got a lot of resources here. So um, at the Langspan Transition Center, um, we have uh, several different kind of resources that are on here. Um, I'll go over these. I'm also just gonna briefly show you the Ohio Employment First webpage. Um, this is a multi-agency partnership that Ocali is a part of with the Department of Education, with um, Department of Developmental Disabilities, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, which is the state vocational rehabilitation agency. They are tasked with helping people find community employment. Uh, we are kind of the curator of a lot of the content on here, especially the transition planning. This is our transition tool. Um, so I'll, I'll start um, here on the Ohio Employment First website because um, two of the handouts that are coming your way are, are from this website. So I think the first one I want to kind of focus on is our um, pathway from school to employment folder. Um, it has a really nice um, timeline of activities kind of from that early, just, just before formal transition planning happens at age 14, all the way through graduation past 22 into those early stages, early years of adulthood. And you'll see that not <clears throat> there isn't a right time to start these. Um, there's there's kind of an order or an ebb of flow to this as far as creating your team, you know, discovering about the youth, helping identify services and supports, bringing together that that team to reality, working on outcomes. Um, so even if you feel like maybe you um, are getting a late start, I hear that very often is, oh no, my son or daughter might be graduating this year or next year. It's never too late to start transition planning. It's never too late to really bring in other partners like the County Board of Developmental Disabilities or OOD, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. Uh, but we really stress on folks to start kind of early, start um, talking about things with the youth. Um, and and um, one of the other items that was handed out to you is this uh, graphic organizer. It's called the Youth Profile. It's broken up into four quadrants and it focuses on the pins, which are preferences, interests, strengths, skills, and needs. And these are really helpful when you start talking about services and supports, when you start talking about adult life visions, what kind of goals or outcomes we want for my adult life. And we start to talk about how other people see this person. What are some of their talents, his gifts and abilities? What, what does the student themselves feel is their talent, gifts and abilities? Where are their passions? What are they interested in? What gets them excited? So this is a really good tool just to start having conversations maybe before an IEP meeting. And then this is something that you could bring to an IEP meeting to say, we've had some of these conversations and here's some information that maybe help the team. Maybe you're bringing in some other partners, uh, the County Board SSA, maybe if you have a mental health professional, ABA professional, other related services that are outside of the school that you might be able to bring in to have some of these discussions so we can really talk about what are the areas of need to support me towards my goals and how can we all work together as a multi-agency team to really help that young person, that student, continue to build on their strengths, identify maybe some assistive technology that could help them, some related services that could help them with some of their needs, and continue kind of working towards their adult life. So this is a really nice, um, a really nice tool just to have conversations. These are really good prompts that you'll see kind of bulleted out. Um, and this is part of our multi-agency our guide for multi-agency teams planning for transition assessment. I can kind of show where that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so what I'll first do is this transition toolkit. We've got um, a, a short video that talks about the employment first framework, which um, here in Ohio is kind of agency neutral. We don't want people kind of building these silos and, and arguing over red tape. Um, it's person-centered to make sure that the person, the student stays at the center of the conversation and it's outcome focused. We're working towards a goal. And we backwards plan as to what services, supports, experiences that youth may need in order to get them to that goal. And then it's, we have our resources. We've tried to find different ways to navigate to all of them. Um, you'll find many of these resources are gonna be in several of these buttons. But depending on how your brain works and how you um, kind of look for information, you may wonder what are the, what's the role in the transition process for myself, for our transition team professionals, what can I expect? And then for my school and agency administrators, if they're interested in some of this uh, multi-agency planning, this might be a really good resource for them as well. 
But the other, the other item that you have a handout up here is this agency navigation tool. And this goes over real briefly some of the different uh, agency partners that can support transition age youth as well as young adults and even um, lifelong adults. <clears throat> You'll see on the first couple of pages, it talks a little bit about the school's role and how to use this document, about connecting early with these agencies that are listed here. It'll talk about being proactive and gathering information. A lot of these agencies that are listed throughout here that talk about different services they offer, they are eligibility based. So it's likely uh, based off of disability, based off of need. So you, you have a list of kind of frequently asked questions here on page three. And then uh, the following page, you kind of get into who are these agencies? Who are these different um, partners that can help my student with maybe um, a community-based um, job assessment or some summer youth work experience or transportation um, or maybe some additional um, self-advocacy training or classes in order to help them find their voice and find something that they're passionate about in order to advocate for themselves in the adult life that they want. So once you get into page five, you start to get into each of these partner agencies and the first one being the Department of Education, which for you guys is going to be Worthington School Districts. So you'll, you'll see some um, different eligibility and service overview, as well as some resources. And then each subsequent agency is kind of listed in the following pages and they're broken up on eligibility, services that are offered, and then some additional information, websites, resources for each of these agencies. And you can see uh, on page six, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities really focuses on community employment, helping people with disabilities find and keep their jobs, uh, as well as kind of exploring jobs, exploring those soft skills that are needed for work, you know, showing up on time, um, proper hygiene, uh, social appropriateness. Um, these are all things that they're going to work on in some of these employment-related services. And these are services that students can access as young as 14 years old. Um, so these are kind of job trials and experiences that they can go through as well as helping them find kind of that summer or weekend or part-time school job while they work towards maybe a, a bigger goal of working with small animals or becoming a welder or some other kind of larger employment goal, they can still help them find work and um, build their work resume as they continue towards kind of a, an ultimate uh, employment goal down the road. I feel like I've thrown a lot at you, so I'm gonna pause just for a moment. So a lot of these agencies that are listed here are kind of the state agency. So on page eight, you'll see Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. It would be Franklin County Board of Developmental Disabilities that would be potentially helping you. Um, and it talks you know, about their, their different services that they have, therapies, transportation, respite, behavior support, um, benefits education and analysis. And then on the last couple of pages, you'll see there's kind of like a roster on page 13 and 14. So maybe if you already have um, engaged with some of these agencies and you want to have a central location for um, the phone number for a, a case manager or a contact name, um, an email, this is really good information for you just to maybe stay organized as well as share with your education team, right? Your IEP team to say, hey, uh, Alex is going to do a summer work experience this summer and Maggie is his OOD counselor. Maggie's gonna have a summer work experience report for you at the beginning of next school year. And that's a really good starting point for educators to say, okay, what do we work on? What are still some of our identified needs? And how can we continue building on the progress that we made over the summer instead of duplicating things or kind of starting all over? Uh, yeah, you most certainly can. Um, like OOD can work with uh, students as young as 14. Anyone can make that referral. A lot of times it can be a school personnel. 
Uh, it could be a family member, it could even be the student themselves. Um, they have a web portal online where you can kind of start that uh, referral process. The County Board of Developmental Disabilities, I would recommend if you're not already connected that you um, kind of go through their intake um, procedures and see if you or your uh, loved one would be eligible. They have a lot of really great resources here in Franklin County, um, both that could be helpful for like the school planning as well as uh, recreational, social, um, lots of other things as well. So yeah, these are all partners that can help. Um, and we really, at Ocali, a lot of our resources um, uh, talk about process for bringing together multi-agency partners. And um, a lot of these different partners, the school, the county board system, OOD, they have both state and federal legislation that they are required and expected to work together for common goals for the student. So it only makes sense to have people kind of in those meetings together sharing information, talking about goals, making sure all of our goals align. I shouldn't be maybe working on a school goal that says I'm gonna be a vet tech and maybe with OOD, I'm working on becoming a, um, you know, a welder. Those maybe don't really align, trying to come together so that way we're all working towards common goals and making sure that we're building services together. Big question. And, and we're lucky in Franklin County, there are a lot of really great resources with these local agencies, as well as other kind of nonprofit. So what's the difference between the DODD and the OOD? Yes. And why is there not a single application for all of the agencies? These are all good questions. You might end up on like a state work group if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> so OOD, for whatever reason, Ohio is the only state in the country that doesn't use VR in their title. Vocational rehabilitation is kind of the, the federal um, the federal agency that helps people um, get jobs based off of either an acquired disability, so if you have a stroke, or from a developmental disability, which is uh, students with disabilities and others. So OOD is completely and 100% employment focused and competitive community-based employment. So not sheltered work, not sub minimum wage work, but actually working in the community side by side with non-disabled peers. It's also uh, opportunities for Ohioans with, Ohioans with disabilities. Um, so uh, if you have someone who maybe has lost a limb or use of a body part and doesn't have a developmental delay, um, those people would be in that system. And so that those individuals aren't eligible to be a part of Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Um, and so in that aspect, that agency supports those individuals um, because they're not tapping into that additional resource. So yeah, so DODD is developmental disability. So their eligibility crisis it, or criteria is you have to um, have a, a developmental disability that manifests before the age of 22. That's kind of the, the, uh, the definition. And then the county board system here in Ohio, um, some of them operate school programs. Um, some of them have uh, rental assistance programs. Some of them have different therapies that they fund. Um, ABA, behavior support, um, counseling. Uh, here in Franklin County, you can um, expect a lot of those resources to potentially be available to, to you and your family. So they, they take a much more holistic approach. They also work with um, folks from kind of diagnosis from a very young age um, for their entire lifespan. So DODD, the county board here in Franklin County would, would not um, kind of stop working with you. Whereas OOD, as soon as you have a job and you're able to keep it for 90 days, they will kind of back out of the picture until you need some additional um, employment support, whether it's finding a new job or maybe keeping that job. If you have um, new job duties or you have a new manager that's maybe not as kind as the last one, um, but they can kind of be re-engaged when you need them. Whereas the county board is gonna stay with you and continue to help kind of plan for housing, uh, plan for other benefits, and, and really kind of be that, that, that uh, focal point agency once the student exits school. Kind of when you're in school, it's really nice because all your therapies are there, all of your teachers are there. There's a really good relationship. You've been in the, system, in the school system for a while. Uh, once you graduate, it's really trying to engage with multiple agencies based off of their specialty, employment, housing, um, Job and Family Services and Medicaid are like needs-based services based off of your um, income. So you kind of start have to piece together these different agencies to 
represent what school did for you for that long time when you're in school. So we really recommend people getting engaged with these agencies prior to graduation. So there's not this drop off this cliff and then you have to kind of scramble and, and get connected with these agencies um, for that first year, or that first summer, whatever it could be that having these folks part of the IEP team and contributing to these planning conversations allows the student to use some of their services before they exit. And then that, that exit past graduation is just much more smooth. I see Colleen shaking her head. Do you have any experience in that? No, I'm just really interested. I, I'm, I'm interested in that. It's a lot of information that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I talk fast too. I'm running out of breath because I have a mask on. Does anyone else have any other questions or anything that um, you want us to, I mean, we did provide a lot of links um, in that website, but if there's any specific area you want us to go into more detail or you know, questions we can answer, we're happy to dig in on any topic. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you start? Like just two different places. Like, would you start at the locality and look at the resources first? Develop a game plan. So like, <laughs> everybody's kind of at a different level, right? Yeah. Needs. Yeah. So, what do we turn to first? So, um, to I think the best place to go when you hit that landing page is to the menu um, right there at the top. Um, and it's going to tell you about all the different centers and then all the online. If you're looking for online learning, go to the online learning at the bottom there. Um, or if you're looking for specific resources, um, that's where the lending library is. Um, but if you know, like, I really want life to, lifespan transition things, I would go to that center because there would be multiple ways to get to what you want, maybe. Or um, so one center we didn't talk about, um, like Gwen's represent tonight, is the Family and Community Outreach Center. So uh, you go there, and there's going to be resources, uh, things you can print. <laughs> Um, an overview of things, um, you know, uh, when we had the state fair, we were hosting, um, we we're helping facilitate a sensory friendly morning at the fair. Um, so just events in the community. Um, there is an event that we did pre-COVID called Hospitality Listens. Um, and so that might be something that gets revived um, at some point. And you can see there's a lot of resources and you may stumble into them through many pathways. Some of these are linked through multiple center sites because we've worked on them together. So um, that resource at the top of the page, the uh, I like to call it the little gray book, the autism spectrum disorder, uh, it's scrolling across. So it, it flashed very quickly. Um, but it's an, a general basic guide to what autism is for families. Um, if you click on it, it's downloadable, it's free, it's in English and Spanish, but it's something I share in the center with the young child because we have a lot of families that are new to maybe getting a diagnosis. Um, and so while it's in the family center, we also use it in the center for the young child. There's a lot of overlap. Does that answer your Yeah. Yeah, and it really depends what you're looking for. Um, if you're looking to um, de-escalate behaviors at home, you know, there's resources for that. If you're looking um, to maybe try some additional skill development or you know employment support. The Lifespan Transition Center is gonna have a lot of those resources as well as Employment First. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on the, the topic. I think to Maggie's point, if you open up this menu and you start to poke around some of the centers based off of what you need or what maybe a current goal is for, for kind of what you're looking for, you should be able to navigate to it um, by just kind of picking the centers and, and going through some of the resources. Because each, I would say, we touched on a, a few online learning um, pieces, but each center also has some online learning. Mm -hmm. So, um, we'll go ahead, you can scroll. I, I just felt like I was so quiet as a talker. Um, <laughs> the uh, Center for the Young Child, like we have online learning as well, called the Suite of Resources for Early Childhood Professionals. Um, and so that is free, it's online, they're about an hour each, and they're specific around early childhood settings. And so while it might be for a preschool provider or a child care provider, um, definitely valuable to families of young children in general as well. 
Um, and then if you went to the Outreach Center for Deafness and Blindness, they have a, a variety of online resources called Promoting Access. Um, and that specifically is how to better include children with sensory disabilities by um, including captioning, having interpreters available, um, how to uh, describe maybe what you look like to someone who is visually impaired so that they are more aware of the visuals being used on the screen in a classroom or in a setting um, where they're not able to see the content being shared on screen. Uh, so those resources are free. And um, I know they've been doing a lot of recent webinars on like hearing screening and vision screenings are coming up. Um, they just have been doing a series called uh, Journey to Independence. Um, one of our staff members, um, Michelle, has let them uh, film her and her um, guide dog. And so these are been videos of her as a young adult becoming independent and living independently with her guide dog in the community. So uh, they are constantly doing things about accessibility in that way too. Yes. Is the county strictly information-based, resource-based, or do you have like a, a person workshop type thing where teams would sit down with people and, and talk and, you know, have discussions as to what are your interests and have like personal interactions, or is it strictly a resource type? So I would say that varies depending on, um, depends on the center itself. So um, our Autism Center uh, will contract and consult with school districts and provide training to school district teams. Um, specifically, uh, the Center for the Young Child does not really do that, take that role on. Um, Lifespan Transition Center, we have a couple of different projects where we're working with um, county boards and their SSA departments to focus on transition, as well as bringing together um, uh, local school district, the county board, and then the local OOD office to come together as kind of a multi-agency team to make sure that there is maybe a common referral form or a common consent form, um, that they're sharing information, they're cross-training, maybe they're sharing staff even, um, they're putting money into a pot to share a staff that could then kind of help uh, families navigate all of those systems. So we do have different projects, uh, but maybe not sitting at like an IEP team level. We do. Uh, so one of our other roles is to be involved in policy. And so a lot of times we are sitting around not at the actual IEP table, but we are um, bringing up different points to the different uh, government boards and um, departments uh, from a different perspective. So um, we participate in a variety of those policy meetings where policy is getting shaped and discussed. And so when you brought up, why can't there be just one referral for like, he might be the person that takes it to uh, the next meeting that uh, happens. Um, the Nice Outdoor Center provides that. There's a, it's uh, specifically for young adults with autism, but I think that they probably have no other. And it's like an eight week to 10 week course where the children sit together, well, they're young adults. And then the parents sit in a, a separate room and they discuss the same things like transition to Medicaid and Medicare, baby, um, job, how to get a license. So like those students, those young adults are talking together and they, with the grown ups are talking together. It's an expensive course and sometimes it can cost more of developmental disability money if you need to pay for it, but insurance, private insurance won't cover it. So it's like, I think $800 out of pocket. It's expensive. But I, my young adult is going to do it in summer, so they have a summer course. And that's called aspirations. Aspirations. Okay. Thank, Thank you for sharing you. that. Yeah. yeah. But that's the only one I know of. Yeah, if you're talking like social clubs, I mean, um, there's a Best Buddies chapter. At yeah, I know those. I'm just, you know, I have a senior that's trying to get out of him. What is it you're going to do? How yeah. to get him to like focus? Okay, just, you know, trying to. Yeah, yeah I think um, there, there are different kind of strategies and tactics for like student-led IEPs. They sometimes they'll have vision or dream boards where they kind of make a collage or a PowerPoint presentation or whatever medium that they're most comfortable with and talk a little bit about themselves and what they like to do, what their priorities are. I would also say, um, oh man, I just lost it. 
I was thinking of a resource that I've seen yes, uh, through the county boards at DT uh, and through Ohio State too, uh, called Charting the Life Course. Oh, yeah. okay. Those resources um, can be really powerful visual planning tools. Uh, I think it's the, the integrated star, and some of those other tools. And I know they've been having a lot of free trainings uh, that they offer online on those tools. Uh, but you had another resource. I, I did. I have a question actually for you guys. Um, one of the first steps here is the transition coordinator. Do they have the um, assigned transition coordinator that comes? Do we have to ask for it? Is it just something like that automatically divided in our next study? I mean, my feel of course, this is going on this team. You know, when did that happen for us? There's a program, it's, there are a couple participating school districts, but also through Ohio State University, they have a Best Buddies program. Um, I think you have to be 18 to be involved in it. Um, They're actually expanding right. school. I don't know all the details about yeah. that, but um, it is exactly an international organization. Yeah. They Start try to match up um, young people with children with disabilities with a buddy, and they have different events. And I just wanted to address the question you were asking. I'm familiar with aspirations. It was very good. My son went through it several times. Cool. Um, it is expensive. It is. But um, of course, the pandemic has affected everything. That's kind of my purview with the family center. We're really trying to focus on those social opportunities. Um, 
there, there's some things in the hopper. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to throw them out there just yet, but um, we You'll had speak lots of the topics listen, which you guys mentioned, which was about um, training students who are going into hospitality to make them aware of some of the needs of special needs families when they go to restaurants. We, we're hopefully, we're trying to get that back up and going with the pandemic, but um, there's some other ideas we had on this. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to put together an autism or disability friendly open mic, like a monthly event. <laughs> And it, it won't be it won't be cost prohibitive at all. It will be free. And um, yes, they, people can perform, but that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is to get them together in a safe space. So you know, stay tuned. You keep reading about Cali, but that is such a need. I'm glad you brought that. It is such a need. Oh my God. And, and that said, is that the. Um, if you scroll all the way down to our homepage, we do have like a, an online newsletter where you'll hear about new projects or updates to tools and resources or anything that's new in the lending library. And then if you go to any of the centers themselves and go to um, the bottom of their homepage, you'll also see um, center specific newsletters as well. So uh, just a lot of different ways to kind of stay connected and updated as to what Ocali has to offer. Uh, but also other kind of events and things that, that we start to put together. If you are on Facebook, uh, we do keep a very active Facebook posting and that uh, posts a lot of things that are happening um, throughout all the centers um, uh, more frequently than the newsletters. Uh, if you're like me, I get a gazillion newsletters and they go into my junk box and I don't always read them. Um, but Facebook, I can scroll through really quickly and find events. and so. Uh, that's a great place to see if you're on social media. Uh, we do post on Instagram some, but not as much. Uh, some of the centers do some Twittering. Some don't. <laughs> I'm not sure it's called that. <laughs> I, I, you can tell I use it. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so there's a, a variety of social media avenues that some of the centers do. Some are more active than others, but uh, we're definitely out there posting things. Uh, and I will, uh, one thing kind of on our center webpage here, we have our take five webinars, which are um, started off again as five minutes, but they tend to go long. And then there's five kind of takeaway resources or links. Um, so we're always adding new things. Um, one of our colleagues at O'Kelly, who is on the spectrum, um, recently had a baby. So she did two take fives on parenting on the spectrum. Um, we, they're broken up kind of by different categories, um, age appropriate transition assessment, which is kind of a, um, an educational buzzword and, and acronym, community collaboration, how to support those multi-agency collaborations, um, the Outreach Center, um, Disability Benefits 101, which is a, a pretty cool website where you can kind of plug in um, what benefits you have and then how earned income is going to affect them. So as a, a youth starts to have a, a summer job or other employment, how is earned income gonna affect some of their benefits? So um, there's a quick walkthrough of that website. Um, but there's, this could be another place to start, potentially, if you're looking for just quick topics on different things, and this may um, lead you to explore some of the resources that are attached to it. We've got some on mental health, uh, phases of life. We had some self-advocates talking, um, talking about guardianship and alternatives to guardianship. Uh, so um, a lot of really good, quick resources in here as well that, that also have just um, opportunities to go deeper on all of these categories. Can you repeat one more time what pages are there? Yeah. The K-5 it was? Yep, so this was just at our Lifespan Transition Center. Okay, Lifespan Transition Center. Yep, so uh, it's in the rotator here, but it's also below. Okay. You can also search. search. Yeah, well, our little search bar here is pretty nifty. Let's check it out. <laughs> Another learning series that we did um, early in the pandemic when we couldn't go out and do in-person professional development is our Inspire Ed virtual learning series. Um, so you'll see um, there's some coming up. We just did one recently last week, last Thursday, uh, but don't worry if you missed it, they all get archived and you can come down here um, to look at our video gallery and see what's happened. Um, the nice thing about it is you can look by for like audience types. So we do have some that are kind of geared towards professionals um, and how to use 
uh, maybe evidence-based teaching instructions or specially designed instructions, then we have some for families, and then it even gets broken up further into um, certain categories. So all just, again, opportunities to learn and, and bring information to your district or bring information to your IEP team to help with the planning for your student. Any other questions that you were hoping we would touch on or? Yeah, it's very funny how these funding comes from residents. We funded agencies and we funded agencies and we funded agencies. So that's a great question. Um, so when Ocali was first started, uh, not know the year and I should, um, <laughs> we were actually written into state legislature um, as a state uh, legislated um, entity. Um, but um, the majority of Ocali's funding comes from the Ohio Department of Education. Um, but additionally, we get funding from the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities as well. Uh, we get funding from the Ohio Disability Council sometimes, yeah. if, uh, grants specifically to work on specific projects. Um, in the Center for the Young Child, sometimes we get funding from Department of Jobs and Family Services um, child care section specifically. Um, but it really varies depending on what we've been asked to develop or put together. But um, sometimes we get private donations, but not usually. Um, but we're in this weird gray space of being a governmental agency, but not being a governmental agency. Um, our parent organization is actually the Educational Service Center of Central Ohio. So um, they oversee us. Okay. Uh, and then has, has anyone been to OcaliCon or heard of OcaliCon? To the virtual version. Yeah. <laughs> so Ocali has hosted, we just celebrated our 15th year. Ocali has um, hosted for 15 years um, a very large conference. Um, it, we actually just found out today, uh, I think 84 counties from Ohio were represented at this most recent one. It takes place every November. And it has been online um, the past two years, but prior to that, it was downtown at the convention center. Um, and we've had 2,000 plus people attending even during the pandemic. Um, online, uh, variety of topic sessions, all um, focused on, uh, I mean, a variety of topics really <laughs> um, that could be of interest to you or to families. Um, we bring in special guests. So this year, our keynote speaker was Judy Human. Um, who it was, uh, it has been a lifelong advocate for um, people with disabilities. She was instrumental in the development of the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and it is a, a really cool event. And parents or family members of people with disabilities actually get a discounted admission or rate, usually like three days of learning. Yeah, I think this year is four. Four days. Uh, and it's a really cool, uh, space to connect with people. We had people from eight different countries represented last year. So we had people from Australia, France, uh, England, South Korea. Um, a few years ago, we had people from Brazil and Argentina present. So um, just it's become somewhat international. We have people from Minnesota, California, New York, all over. There's a lot of like leading experts in some of our different fields, whether it's autism or um, early learning or transition. Um, but then also we really try to recruit people that are doing that work in Ohio so they can talk about their experience and how they got started, um, lessons learned, what kind of outcomes they're seeing, how they're being able to support students. So it's a really nice mix of um, learning about you know, new ways to help serve your loved one or your students, but also hear from practitioners that are doing this work so you can kind of get a game plan for Ohio. Like the, the parent mentors were there this year. The coalition had a couple of different sessions. So it's uh, we do a really good job of making sure there's something for everybody. Yeah. And there's also a lot of individuals with disabilities themselves that do present at the conference. So it's always really um, great to actually hear from individuals and their own personal experiences and, uh, you know, speak to, you know, their thoughts on different things. Uh, there was a really great session about autism spectrum uh, from girls' perspective, and it was a panel of young women talking about their life experiences and what it's like for them. Uh, and so it is 
you know, a little bit different in that we have people who are out there in the community um, actually presenting to uh, the field as well to inform people who are preaching different intervention strategies. Any other questions about homeschool agency partners? This year. <laughs> it's just overwhelming. Yeah, we hear that a lot. This next year. Yeah, there's there's um there's always this turning point, right, of a student starting to either take over some of their, you know, directing of service and, and engaging with agencies and being involved in their IEP and being, finding their voice. And um, sometimes it can be really, really difficult to do. I do know um, there is, this isn't us, but I'm sure they won't mind me sharing. The Ohio Family Network is a, a new project with Department of Developmental Disabilities. They have like five or six different organizations um, around the state that are working with families and youth um, to promote self-determination and self-advocacy as well as just support families kind of through, through their, uh, their journey. And there are some here in central Ohio that are participating uh, and a lot of because this project got started like January 1 of 2020, they, a lot, all of these organizations quickly pivoted to online supports and services. So you'll see there's a lot of online parent groups. There's a lot of online student groups. There's like a student, there's some like young adult only groups that are on like Facebook and something called Discord. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm getting all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they, they, are, they are developing all these different channels for youth to connect to each other, families to connect to each other. Um, so I would check out these organizations as well. Milestones is a, re a really big one that's um, developed a lot of online resources for youth specifically. Uh, but I think it's a need that finally state agencies are starting to, to notice. And you'll, I think you're gonna see more and more. They're, they've done another request for proposals for organizations to become part of this family network. Because um, they don't, they're not trying to set up like a network. They just, they want agencies, nonprofit, um, organizations that are already embedded in their community, already know their community, that can just be part of the network and receive this additional funding and some support, but continue to kind of move their mission forward locally. So I would, I would certainly check out these. Um, again, I think I just typed in Ohio Family Network to the search bar on the DD's website, and you'll find that in the agency navigation tool. Um, but a lot of um, classes for youth, a lot of classes for um, parents and families as well. So really great resource. Hopefully we haven't bombarded you with too much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it can be tough to come up here and talk about your entire organization that's got you know, <laughs> yeah, 10 yeah. centers and an international conference and uh, lots of resources. So I would say explore the website. Um, like Maggie said, kind of go through the menu and look at the different centers kind of that speak to you and where you and your family are at. Um, and then you can always um, find us. There's usually an inbox or an email somewhere or questions get to us. Yeah. Well, and if you're ever wondering if anything's new, because they're, we're constantly like developing new things, this uh, front highlights thing is scrolling through, like it's been flipping the whole time we've been talking. Uh, it will show you what's new and what's out there. Or if we're promoting a specific training event, uh, like I'm hosting one for early interventionists on Friday. Um, it, but it's not open to the public, but it's for that group. It might rotate through a lot. So if there was an event that's being hosted that's open to everyone, it would be like rotating through there. Is that the kind of thing that if you follow uh, O'Connor on Facebook, 
that it would pop up. Yeah, you would see like, okay. oh, they're they're doing a new take five, or oh, um, uh, like the journey to independence with Michelle. There, there's a new one coming up, and if you wanted to be a kept alert of it, it you would see it get posted. Okay. Thank you guys, we appreciate it. Yes, I will keep all of these. I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, this is great. Um, Oh, yeah. I have a newsletter coming out, so I'll put all of these links up there. Yeah, yeah. If you can't find something, let me know. You can okay. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah it gets over here with my son. Yeah. 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 Yeah.